Hello and welcome to another video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. In this video tutorial we are going to learn how to make Chrome that is easy to edit and updates as you change the artwork on that layer and we're going to achieve this Chrome by using what's called layer styles. So let's come over to here, file, new, we're going to create a new document, we'll call it Chrome. We're going to set the width to about 650 pixels and the height to about 300 pixels, color mode, RGB. I was just working in grayscale. And we're going to set the background contents to be white, although we're going to change that as soon as we open it. I am going to change the background to black. I just hit control I. That basically does an image adjustments invert. Inverts all the color you have. Okay. So first up, we're going to grab the layers palette. I'm going to set it right in here so you can see what we're doing. And I am going to start out by creating a new layer. Come down here and hit the new layer button. And I'm going to grab the text tool. Now, my text color is set to black here, so you're not going to see anything. But I'm just going to type the word CHROME in all caps. I'm going to select it. I'm going to change the color to white so we can see it. The uh, color really doesn't matter. But we're just going to set it to white. We're going to change all the color settings in just a minute. We're going to set the size to 72 point, which is a tad on the large side. We're going to make it bold, and we're going to leave the font Arial. Let's size it down to about 48. And check to see how much smaller we still need to make it. All right, double click on the little thumbnail, and we're going to make it a little bit smaller. Right there, let's keep it at 30 point. That's good. Just like that, perfect. Now we are going to start applying layer styles to this bit of text here but before we do that I want to quick point out that I have here on my under my characters palette I happen to remember that I had some settings set in here and basically this is just some letter spacing uh, options that you have here in your characters palette I just basically widen my word a little bit put some more spacing between the letters. It's also referred to as kerning. And I also made the letters a bit taller. So you can do that if you want. Um, I just did it because I like my letters to be a little more spaced out when I'm applying this kind of effect. It kind of sets each letter apart just a little more. Alright, let's open up the layer styles window by coming down here to this little icon here on the bottom of the layers palette and just hitting blending options. And the first thing we're going to do is going to make this text completely disappear. And this is why the color of the text really doesn't matter. We're going to come here to the advanced blending section of your blending options. And we're going to reduce the fill opacity to zero. And you can see the text has just disappeared. Now, we're going to apply a drop shadow, which you're not going to see because we have this on a black background. But in case we move our chrome to a white background, we'll have a little bit of a drop shadow. And of course, if you don't want the drop shadow, you can always come back in and get rid of it. We'll leave all the options at default except for the opacity, which we're going to set to about 40%. Oops. I'm just typing in 40. And the size and distance we're going to reduce to about 3. All right, that's the drop shadow. And now we're going to apply a gradient overlay here. Now, this is going to be kind of like the background of our chrome. So we want this to kind of be mixed up and have a lot of metal looking tones in it. So. I'm going to come in here to the gradient editor and we're going to make a custom gradient here. So I'm going to click three times in between my black and white color stops here to add additional stops. Click where you want the stops to be added. I'm going to place them approximately, you know, all the same distance apart. So we've got five color stops here. And I'm going to start out over here to the left. I'm going to make this a dark gray. And I'm going to come over to the one next to it. Now I'm going to make this a light gray. And I'm going to come to the next one, and I'm going to make this one a medium gray. Okay, a little bit darker than that light gray, but not as dark as that dark gray. In fact, I'm going to make that dark gray a bit darker. Like that. Then this one I'm going to make completely white. And this one up on top here, I'm going to make a light gray. Just like that. Okay, so we've got this gradient here. You can save the gradient if you want by giving it a name and just hitting new. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Actually, you know what? I am going to save it because we are going to use it again in just a minute. So I'm going to save this as gradient, metal gradient, actually. And I'm just going to hit new. And you're going to see it's going to place this metal gradient here where I already have two other metal gradients. But I've got this metal gradient, and this is one that I use a lot. So 
I'm going to save it there, and you can see I already have a save preset, but now you know how to make that metal gradient as well. All right, we need to change a few other options in here. We, uh, we're going to leave the opacity at 100. We're going to change the scale to 80%. Okay, that's going to pull the edges of the gradient in a little bit, which is just going to help us out a little bit in just a minute. One other thing we're going to add is an inner shadow. And the settings for the inner shadow are all going to be default again, except for the opacity, which we're going to re reduce, excuse me, to 10%, and the size, which we're going to increase to 8 pixels. So that's our inner shadow. We're also going to give this an inner glow. And this inner glow, we're going to switch the blend mode to normal. We're going to switch the color to white. And we're going to pump the opacity up to 100%. And that's it. You can up the size a couple pixels if you want like that. I just upped it to 7, but it's really going to depend on how big you made your letters because a lot of these layer style options really depend on how big the object is that you're styling. So, next thing we need to do is apply a bevel and emboss, and this is where you're going to really see the chrome come out here, is in this bevel and emboss. By the time we finish editing this, it's going to look quite a bit different. So under bevel and emboss, we got a couple changes here we have to make. The first is the style. We want the style to be inner bevel, and we want the technique to be chisel hard. We're going to set the depth, the depth, excuse me, to right around 80%. I'm going to leave the direction as up, and we're going to set the size to 5 pixels. Let's see, we do about 6 pixels. I just increased it by 1 there. And we're going to up down here at the bottom in the shading area, we're going to up the highlight mode, okay, the, the opacity for the highlights. So we're not going to change the highlight mode. We're going to up the highlight opacity to 100%. And we're going to reduce the shadow opacity down to about 50%. All right. Now, the thing that's really going to make this start looking like chrome in just a second is we're going to start messing with this gloss contour. And we're going to create our own contour here. And the way you create your own contour is by clicking on the actual contour box, not the arrow. The arrow is going to give you all the presets. We don't want the presets. We want to create our own. So I clicked on it, and here's the contour editor. First thing we're going to do is grab both of these handles with the mouse and we're going to drag them to the center and that's going to kill all the contrast we have. If you look over at the C you can see it's as if we don't have any bevel and emboss applied at all. It's because we've just gotten rid of all the contrast. Well we're going to do this because we're actually going to increase the contrast here. I'm just going to click to place a new anchor point and I'm going to drag it way down almost to the bottom. I don't want any of my line to touch the bottom at any point here. Now I'm going to drag another one and I'm going to pull it all the way up close to the top and I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm going to go back and forth until I get all the way across and what this is doing is this is really increasing the amount of contrast we have in our text. All right, I'm going to pull this last handle up a little bit. Now I'm going to hit OK and if we want to save this contour I'm going to click down on the little drop down menu and here up in this little arrow you can see new contour and I can just save it. I'll just say Chrome and hit OK and you can see I've got it saved here down at the bottom and that's my Chrome contour. And now if you take a look at the text it looks a lot more like Chrome now that we have applied that contour to it. Okay, So that's how you create and save new contours. Let's move on here to Satin. We're going to apply this Satin effect here. We're going to change the color though from black to white and because we're changing it to white we're also going to change the blend mode to normal. We're going to pump the opacity up to 100 and I'm going to change the distance. I'm going to reduce the distance a little bit. We're going to reduce it to about 10 and we're going to reduce the size quite a bit. Let's say 5, make it a little bit smaller than 5, 3. I'm going to stick with 3 pixels. And we're going to change the contour here to the cone contour, this contour right here, the one that looks like a shark's fin, just like that. And the last thing we're going to do to our chrome here is apply a stroke to it. So I'm going to check off stroke, and you can see it gives us the lovely 3 pixel red stroke. We're going to reduce that to 1 pixel, and we're going to change the fill type to gradient. We're actually going to use a gradient as our stroke. We're going to come into our gradient editor again, and we're going to grab our original metal gradient that we were just using. And I'm going to tilt the angle just ever so slightly, just maybe 95 degrees, just like that. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to hit OK, actually, because we are 
basically finished here with the layer styles box. We're going to come in for one last thing. I'm going to hit OK. But the reason I applied that gradient stroke is if you look closely at the edge of these letters, you probably can't see it in this video, but if you're following along, if you look closely at the edge of the letters, when you apply a stroke and we have that white in that gradient, that white is running along at an angle coming from the bottom left hand corner up to the top right and it's making it look like there's just a little bit of a highlight on the edges of these letters. It just adds just a little bit more realism to the chrome you're making. Okay, so we've got this chrome here and we have this chrome style that we've made. Last thing to do, I'm going to double click on that little F in the layers uh, palette there next to my chrome text layer. We have this chrome and the last thing to do is save it as a style so we can apply it to other text anywhere we want in any file, any document, wherever. So I'm just going to hit the new style button and I'm going to give the style a name. I'm just going to call it Chrome It. And hit OK. And now if we come up here to styles we can see down here at the bottom we have this little Chrome style. So what that means is I can now trash this layer. I can create a new layer, break out the text tool, and type out whatever I want. I'm actually going to reduce the size just a little bit. And I'm going to have to reduce the size a little bit more and correct my punctuation error. Reduce the size a wee bit more. Right like that. And now I can come over here to blending options and in this dialog box hit the styles tab up in the top left corner and right here at the end I've got my chrome you can see I just clicked it and it automatically applies it to the text that I have out there but you don't have to be limited to just text matter of fact I can't apply the style to a blank layer I'm gonna come up here to window and grab the styles palette which is right here and down here at the bottom is our chrome style I'm gonna click that now I've applied that to a blank layer well I can come in here with a brush and it doesn't matter what color the brush is and I can just start painting with the brush and you can see it's just gonna start making this chrome out of whatever I do to that layer so that's very nice and you can do a lot of cool things with layer styles and obviously the fact that they just update on the fly is very nice too. like I can delete the dot com and write slash you know whatever so it really doesn't matter and because it's a layer style it's always going to update if I resize this, if I size it down, if I delete all this, retype it, whatever. It's the beauty of layer styles and of course you can always save it as a style here so you can quickly access it in other documents and other work, other things you're working on. So that's it for this one. That's how you create Chrome in Photoshop. That's one way to create Chrome in Photoshop I should say. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope you go check the site out. The site is www.tutvid.com. Thanks for watching.